Hope you're all well. This is actually Sunday morning. I just got in from church. Happy St. Patrick's Day if you celebrate. I am... My whole weekend is completely different than I had anticipated. And so that's why we're doing a craft with me on Sunday instead of Saturday but you know you might be watching this in the middle of the week so it doesn't matter to you anyways but I am here here's the deal as I sit here in it I was going to do a craft with me while I was stitching yesterday yesterday morning but Friday night, I finished the page on Henry. And when I finished that page on Henry, it was kind of like having a finish. And we, I think many of us know what it's like whenever we have a finish, what happens. I kind of got into one of those, like, I didn't want to stitch funk. And so, Yesterday, I got up, and I was all ready to, to do a, a filming, and I pulled out the next project, and you can see here what I was planning on work, uh, what I was working on, getting ready to work on, 
and I started putting some stitches into the mushroom sampler and I had no motivation to stitch none whatsoever so yesterday I didn't stitch much I might have stitched maybe 45 minutes to an hour or well, maybe a little bit longer I don't know I think I might have sat there and wanted to stitch longer but I didn't really stitch and so that kind of blew my whole plans up because I'm trying to vary the craft with me videos up so it's not always knitting or it's not always stitching but it's, lately it's been a lot of knitting so that was the whole plan was to have a craft with me with stitching while we chatted and answered some questions well it didn't happen and I'm still kind of feeling the not wanting to stitch bug so I decided last night I started a dishcloth and I figured this morning after I got home from church I would just go ahead and film a stitch with me or a craft with me while doing some knitting because I can still talk and, and, and knit and craft and hang out with all of you and talk about the fact that you know sometimes we have those periods where we just don't want to craft and I myself definitely have that happen whenever I get to a major milestone or a large finish so I would love to hear from you because usually on these videos I like to ask a question for you to interact with me about in the comments so I'd love to hear from you what happens to you whenever you have either a large page finish if you do a full coverage or if you hit a major milestone on one of your larger pieces or if you have a uh, a fully finished not necessarily fully finished meaning framed and everything but when you get all of the stitching and the the design is finished what happens are you one of those that jumps right into the next design or do you have a little bit of a lag and a uh, I hate depression is such a strong word but do you get into a little bit of a funk where you just you're kind of like eh, where do I go to next and so I'm curious as to what happens to you. I know for me, I kind of get to the point where I want, I know as I'm working on the piece that I'm getting ready to finish or the page finish, I know what I want to work on next. And then that's why I pulled out the mushrooms. When I pulled it out yesterday, it's almost like I, didn't want to work on it and like it's the wrong project it's almost like it was the feeling like it was the wrong project to be working on but I didn't know what the right project was and so that was my dilemma and because I didn't know what the right project was to work on but yet my mind kept telling me I wanted to be working on the mushrooms but in a way my heart was saying no, I was torn. So, you know, it's one of those where, and I think it's also a natural way that my mind and my body is telling me I need to take a break so I don't get burned out and then at the same time I didn't want to knit either which is strange because usually when I go from whenever I get tired of doing one craft I will switch over to the other and I'm like all for it for let me count five six seven
at three more rows. So you can, I'm, I'm trying to use up the remaining uh, amount of yarn on a skein or a ball. So let me finish what I was getting at. But so for me, I think I was just at a, I don't know. Yesterday was a wash. And I'm hoping I can get back into some stitching today, but I, I don't know. But I'm not going to force it either. And I have other crafts because I am feeling like doing some knitting today. I'm feeling like doing some diamond painting later today. So hopefully we can get some good crafting in regardless of. And that's why I like to be diversified in my crafting. Because then if I don't feel like doing one, I can always switch to the other. Okay, talking about my, my knitting a little bit. So I am knitting a dishcloth using Louise Patterson's super simple dishcloth pattern that you can find on Ravelry. It is a very basic garter stitch pattern with increases and decreases on each row. Increases going up and then decreases going down and because it's knit on the bias. Let me get to the end of the row so I can show you what I'm doing and what I'm using. I have said before I have a bunch of leftover balls of yarn from whenever I first started learning how to knit whenever I was doing a whole bunch of dishcloths so I have my gnome bag full of all of these different leftover balls of yarn that I'm trying to just use up and purge some of my supply but also have stuff in the ready in case I need a gift or uh, use them. I did start to use some of these dishcloths with some of my dishwashing which is nice um, and, and I do actually like using them. So this dishcloth that I'm making I, I'm using up the leftover um, skein of this is yarn that I purchased from Hobby Lobby so this is a variegated, and I'm sorry, I do not know the name of this one. It's similar to this one, but this, uh, it also has yellow, whereas this one doesn't have yellow. But it is this this line of, I love this cotton, which is their Hobby Lobby's brand of yarn. I, I love this and then whatever kind of uh, yarn it is. So this is uh, their Hobby Lobby brand of cotton. And then I'm also using a bit of if I run out of this which I'm hoping to do I'm going to use a little bit of whatever I have left over on this cake of or yarn skein whatever and it is a knit picks dishy and I'm I don't know the name it's some kind of gray but another thing that I'm really kind of enjoying do I have been enjoying is using up the leftovers from of what I have because when I come to the end of a ball that is a really nice feeling knowing that I've used up pretty much every last bit of yarn or you know, when I'm working on a, a cross stitch pattern, I also feel the same way when I've used up an entire skein of DMC, especially like in my full coverage pieces or something like that. And I have to get out a new skein and wind it back onto the bobbin. That's a really, I, I don't know. I just, I always enjoy that feeling of using up the entire, 
every last bit. It's almost just kind of like, and I get the same feeling in, in all walks of parts of my life. So, you know, when I'm using up dish soap or shampoo or tw uh, toothpaste, when you get to that very last drop, the last, and then you get to throw the bottle, you know, re well, we should re be recycling, recycle the bottle or throw the bottle away or whatever, you know, it's just that last bit. And then you get to go and open up a brand new container of whatever it is. I really like that feeling. So I've been enjoying that process. But I know that while I'm knitting that, you know, my whole, the whole time I'm sitting here, I've been thinking about my cross stitch, which means that, you know, I think I'm going to be getting back into it today, let's hope, and have some, some good stitching in today. I would love to get one of those mushroom motifs done before Wednesday's update. My, um, the thought was for me to work on, and now that I say this, it's not going to happen, but we'll see, was that I was going to work on that, on the, I have two more mushroom motifs until the entire outside border of the mushrooms are done. So I was hoping to get both of those motifs done. And then I can say that, you know, it's kind of like a, a finish, a mini finish for that design. And then all I have left are, is the inside center section of that design which is going to be really exciting i'm hoping to get that entire pattern done by the end of the summer that's my goal and that's definitely a very feasible thing to do okay If you've been part, uh, working on your large projects for the large project finish, you don't worry, you still have plenty of time, but I have four pages left on Henry. So that will continue. I don't expect to be taking too long of a break on Henry before I get back to the next page. But I am taking a little bit of a break, so that is fine and dandy. Don't forget that you do not have to send a preliminary email. All you have to do is send me the final product of what it looks like when it's all done and all the information that says in the that initial video and you will be entered into the drawing. And don't forget that, you know, if you have more than one finish that meets the criteria in this time period, then you get more than one entry. So Definitely be working towards that if you are. I'm very excited about that, and I've been getting some excellent entries already, and I love seeing all the progress that people are making, so that's a lot of fun. And I've also been getting some great questions. So if you have questions specific to that entry, you can ask it on the Ask the questions on the, the in the comments of the video, or you can go ahead and just email me right in my email, which is provided at the in the uh, information section of that video. 
And I know many, I do get lots of questions on everyone on, on my videos. If I, if I, if you do ask a question and I don't get to it right away, please keep in mind that I do make a lot of videos and that sometimes my videos are, I, I do film ahead of time. So I might not get to your question like in the very next video. So if it is something that, you know, you are expecting a more immediate response than a few weeks down the road, then please make sure you email me or message me on Instagram. That is perfectly acceptable. Uh, but I also will will respond in, con uh, in turn on my videos. I just can't guarantee when that will be because of the way I do film my videos. I film my videos whenever I ha get a chance to film. So if that means that I film a craft with me on Monday for the following Saturday, that's what I do because I have a chance in my schedule to film. You know, my, my schedules have been racking up pretty quickly. And so er, racking up and filling up with lots going on, work is getting busier and busier. So I, I do the best that I can and I answer and I make sure I always try to answer on YouTube as well, but then on in the comments, but then I will try to get to it in the videos. And sometimes to be honest, I'm human and I just forget. But today's video, I wanted to specifically talk about finish fatigue. That's a good, that's a good way of putting it. Finish fatigue. Finishing something and then being fatigued. And then having to, you know, re-energize yourself. So I wasn't going to answer any questions today just because that really struck a chord with me yesterday. And so I wanted to discuss that. I don't remember how many rows I did. I think I'm ready to decrease. Yeah. I wanted to discuss that on today's video. So next week, I will hope to have a stitching craft with me so that I can share in some, the joy of some stitching with you that do stitch and not knit with me whenever I do the knitting. So as you can see, we're getting smaller and smaller. I don't know. I might not even have to use the gray or it'll be very little at the very tip, which will be kind of cool. It'll give it a nice uh, design aesthetic. Speaking of design aesthetic, I got a lot of great comments from my discussion on creativity and uniqueness on Thursdays, my last weekly update. And I just wanted to reinforce, you know, again, those are all my own personal thoughts and opinions. And, you know, of course, we're all welcome to our own thoughts and opinions. And I would love to hear from you regarding your thoughts about being creative and 
unique in the cross stitch world. I say that because you know I can I can see how it can be hard to wrap your mind around being unique and creative whenever we're dealing with patterns that are so rigid in their design for following a specific pattern and following specific criteria for the colors and so as I always say I love to hear from you about your thoughts and opinions and you know have an open dialogue and conversation about that kind of topic And what's nice about it is that there is no one right or wrong answer. Every Everyone's answer is valid and justified and correct. So don't be afraid to speak up and say your mind as long as it's, you know, polite and respectful because we all have an opinion and a thought and should be allowed to voice our opinion and thought without criticism or argument from others. So, I'm going to let you go. I hope you all have a wonderful week. I will see you on the next Create Craft with me. Hopefully stitching. and to, But who knows, because life happens the way it happens. But until then, don't forget to always be creative.